Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel as always, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we're going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 8 content. We've not got long left in this series until Series 9 is introduced, so taking advantage of it now, uh, we've got about another week of teams. So thank you so much again for everyone that has submitted rentals or suggestions for next week, the final week of Series 8. I'm looking forward to covering as many things as possible next week before we we launch into series nine and obviously a week today friday pokemon snap will be coming out so another thing for us to kind of get our teeth into i'm very excited about that if you're getting pokemon snap i'm looking forward to it obviously let me know down in the comment section below we'll be covering it here on the channel so stay stay tuned for that i'll try and do some streaming as well around it. anyway getting into today's team because we're a bit off topic uh we're featuring another rental team from another top japanese player um it is from pirikichi is the japanese player it's their handle is at Pirikichi. You can find all of their links, their social handles down in the description below. Definitely go and give them a follow. Um, and the blog post as well with all the details about the team and the build and things like that is all detailed down below. So you can have a look at that and uh, get all the information that you need. Here's the rental code though. Very cool team. And the one thing that definitely sticks out, well, there's a couple obviously, but the one thing that really sticks out is the ditto. And I love the concept of ditto in Series 8 and any sort of legendary format, restricted format that we've got because you're able with the restrictions to kind of surpass the ability to have more than one restricted or two restricteds in previous formats with ditto with that imposter ability that it is able to come in and kind of transform into those big powerful pokemon that you're going to have access to i really love it the focus sash there gives it a lot of kind of uh leeway gives you a bit more stability and then you've got a really nice support and cast obviously double genies in here one of them being the thunderous incarnate and players are you can see tending to go with a more support of route than that defiant more offensive route and it really does kind of pay off here because the scary face is great speed control you've got eerie impulse to really slow things down special attack as it really kind of threaten things like zassi and, and lander is quite heavily and then some nice support and cast you know we've seen umbrian do amazing work in series eight so it's gonna be nice to feature it again today and then the rotom a little bit forgotten a pokemon but still a very good one again especially all these steel types that are kicking around and it gives a nice another ground immunity uh for the zassi and there's three ground immunities on this team love the team hope you do give it a try out if you uh, jump on the ladder uh, we'll have a couple of games now with the team and then we will uh, wrap up with the rental code at the end so i hope you enjoyed today's episode as always um and without further ado friends we'll get into today's episode also friends before we get into the matches today i just want to give you a big uh, shout out everyone a big shout out for all the kind messages and 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 kind words and things that i got for my poor poor finger it's actually a lot better so i was lucky enough at work yesterday to actually go down and get an x-ray and see a nurse about my finger to see if it was all right and uh, they've said there's no ligament damage and uh, the there's no fracture as well so i got i got an x-ray but you can kind of see the the extent of the the purple finger it's pretty gross but um yeah i'm pretty lucky really thankful but yeah just a big shout out to all of you for um for all the kind messages about it but uh, it is on the mend the gaming finger is going to be back in action in no time right we've got a first opponent of the episode they're playing a team of Politod kingdra sylvia and galarian moltres luxury and azashian so really interesting team got some really cool picks in here as well obviously the luxury sylvian on things that you see too commonly but really nice picks nonetheless um the the rain mode obviously supporting the zashian really really oppressive mode that we need to be very careful of of course um can we take advantage of the ditto here i mean there is a zash in so there is the opportunity of course it will arise i think you know like thunderous is really good here with the eerie impulse the scary face to just disrupt like a lot of things on my opponent's team um and i kind of like i like um well i, re I love rotom it resists pretty much most things that that scene kind of threatens us with anyway do we want landorus or do we want uh ditto i think we'll go ditto we'll go uh without landorus here i think we can probably get away without landorus we'll go ditto and zashian in the back because they've got to bring ditto it is a ditto team of course the sensible lee in this situation would have brought landorus but the lee that wants to make something exciting where we can potentially have three zashians on a field at once 
wants to bring the ditto. So I hope you agree with me in this. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we'll see what what happens. Um. Yeah, another news as well. Obviously, Players Cup 3 will be going live. The broadcast will be starting uh, today for the Global Finals. Very exciting. We'll be kicking off with me and Lou later on today. And then we'll be throwing over to Aaron and Sierra, who will uh, finish up the broadcast. But going to be amazing. Yeah, I hope if you can catch it, you do enjoy it. Uh, Eerie Impulse is what we need to do on that Kingdra. And we need to go for a... Ooh, do we go for a nasty plot? I think we do go for a nasty plot. Because I think the Kingdra is in one of those awkward spots where is it it's like is this if they don't know the team is this a defiant thunderous because our best option here is probably max wormwind um best option here is um max geyser obviously into the the thunderous but it's not going to be doing as much damage after an eerie impulse and uh, we're going to be in a position where you know rotom is going to be kind of set up going into the next turn thunderous should take a max geyser i'm I'm confident it will take it. I know it's still going to hit like an absolute truck, especially if the, the Kingdra's life orbed. Uh, it's got the rain up, obviously boosting it further. Helping hand as well. Let's see, can Thunderous take this? <laughs> I'm not I'm not feeling overly confident right now. But we will we will see. We will see. We will see. Guys are coming out. Come on, Thunderous. You just take this. Just this one. This is all we need. Just this one. Yeah, there we go, Thunderous. You are the Pokemon I've always remembered you for, being an absolute tank. I do love Thunderous. You know, the more I play Series 8, the more I just think, eh, Thunderous is just literally one of my, it, it really is one of my all-time favorite Pokemon. Um, now we can go for a scary phase, because I feel like now they've committed to the max, it feels a bit more uh, safe to kind of go for that. And, like, lowering the speed as well just opens up the door for, like, Zashin to come in, or, or Ditto even. Uh, Probably not Ditto, to be honest. We'll max uh, Rotom. We'll go for a Lightning into the Politoed. But before we do, we'll just check. Have they got any ground immunities? Nothing that would be able to come in and not take ridiculous damage from it. So we're kind of safe going into that slot. It's always good, like, looking in team preview. Just to have a look. What resists they've got? Could they switch it in? Look at this Rotom. Ah, oh, in the... Is that, a, is that a sport ball, I think? Sport ball? Correct me if I'm wrong, chat. Um, but it's very cool. Very cool put together Rotom. I will just say that. That is uh, probably the perfect ball for it. Yeah, it's always worth just checking to see if there's any resists on the team. To they can come in and, and, and ruin your day a little bit and just kind of play around that and go for the safe option most of the time. Kind of pay off. Um, Thunderous is going to go down here, unfortunately, but it has done a lot of work in just kind of really nullifying uh, what the Kingdra is going to be able to do. It does mean that the next turn, that Zacian's are uh, our best option uh, to come in because you don't want to bring the Ditto in on the Kingdra now because we'll replicate all of the stat drops the opposing Kingdra has got and it's not going to put us in the, the best position. So we kind of as well want to wait until the Zacian's out on the field from my opponent and then bring in the ditto especially after it's got that intrepid sword boost so we can protect on the kingdra this turn with zashin if we really need to we can maybe max lightning into that slot as well uh but it'll be interesting yeah the uh, luxury coming in mm. yeah, that's not ideal but i mean a max a max geyser from us against the luxury is gonna wipe it out like 100 gonna wipe it out so we don't really, we don't need to be too concerned there. We could go for a substitute as well. It's definitely an option. Um, but I think just protecting this turn. Uh, yeah, I think. No, no, no. I think actually, yeah, let's go for the sub here. Because we're going to outspeed the Kingdra in the rain. And we'll go for a Max Geyser into the Lux because we should outspeed it so it does just mean then if the Zashin from my opponent comes in the next turn then we are going to be in a position where we can protect uh, whereas if we don't do that then we're not going to be in that position if that makes sense we do see the max airstream as well which is you know it's going to mean my opponent's Luxray pro uh, it's not going to outspeed 
it's ashen, I don't think. It depends what the speed is ashen is, but it will add speed raw to him. So it's going to have, yeah, the option to get an attack off, which makes it a little bit more tricky to deal with. But the thing is now we're getting value out of our substitute because we're in a great spot going into the next turn, whereas Ashen's still got Protect uh, to take advantage of. Um, and we can remove the Luxray from play if we want, uh, whilst going after the Kingdra, I think, with a max... Max Lightning. It's better. It's just Behemoth Blade into the Lux Ray. And yeah, Max Lightning. Yeah. So let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, hmm. I don't think the Lux Ray will outspeed Zashin. It may do. It may do. That might not be so good because then I guess the big drawback here would be the Lux Ray breaking our sub. Kingdra going for a Hydro Pump into Zashin, which makes things a little bit more difficult. But again, it's not the worst. It's not the worst. So, does a sub? It does break. Okay. But we outspeed the Luxray still, which I was kind of suspecting that we did. This will take the Luxray down, even if it's resisted still enough. And the Max Lightning. Even though we're kind of neutral now after the Eerie Impulse, it should, should, uh, probably doesn't take the Kingdra down. I can't imagine it will. Oh, it's very close, very close, very close. Okay. Oh no, our sub didn't break. Okay, what am I talking about? So we've still got our sub in intact. <laughs> All right, well, they get the Intrepid Sword boost. I think now we protect Zashin we get rid of the Kingdra because the Kingdra is like the, the thing that my opponent is going to utilize to it outspeeds the Zashin it means that you're going to be able to get rid of the substitute potentially and set up your own Zashin to take ours down um puts you in a better position and Rotom still not really that threatened here I mean a Sacred Sword or a close combat definitely going to hit us for big damage especially plus one Zashin but I don't see it being enough to take us down and then we want Ditto to come in for our Rotom. So there's the Hurricane. The third attempt to break the sub on our Zashin Behemoth Blade coming out into the Protect and we'll be able to remove the Kingdra from play. And then we're gonna be able to set up the field for our own Ditto to come in and uh, two on one this Ashen. And it doesn't really matter that we're switching Rotom out at this point. Uh, we're not losing our boosts, they've already been taken away from us. So we're, we're sitting in a great spot and you have to, like if you're my opponent, you have to really concentrate down on our, our Zashin here because it's it's got the sub, you need to remove the sub before you can deal with it. So it's like, it's attracting all the attention. Oh, we didn't get to see the Ditto come in. Oh, I'm very disappointed about that. Good game to my opponent. Nice one for us to kick off with today. But we failed to get the debt on the field. So I feel like I've, I've failed you all in that one. Okay, well, we'll move into our next one. We'll see if we can get the debt going again. It would be uh, it would be nice if we can get it going today. Maybe we can lead it in, in a match, maybe. That will definitely guarantee it. But we've got plenty of other Pokemon on the team to kind of take advantage of. Obviously, Rotom there was just so invaluable for us. You know, it made that match so much easier. Okay, we've got our next opponent playing a Whimsicott, Shadow Rider Calyrex, Thunderous Incarnate, Yoshifu, Incineroar, and Tapu Lele. So, no indeed, you know the redirection here. So, but you've got the Lele, which is way more of an offensive threat alongside the uh, the Shadow Rider Calyrex. Especially when you've got Whimsicott support with the Tailwind. Um, it's kind of like your very standard Shadow Rider Calyrex team um, and just very hyper offensive. Umbreon going to be really useful for us here, uh, just disrupting, but we have to be careful around things like Urshifu, for sure, and the Tapu Lele has potentially access to, like, Moonblast, which could hit us for horrible damage, but I do feel like Ditto is going to be a, 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 such a valuable Pokemon in this game, uh, just because of the fact we've got the Sash and we can copy the, the Calyrex in, in a real pinch. So, I think, I think, I think, I think, what are we going to lead? What are we going to lead? I mean, Umbreon feels good i think zashian has to come i don't know if i want to lead zashian though uh i think maybe thunderous zashian and ditto in the back i think yeah yeah let's lock that in yeah 
I want to bring like all six Pokemon, but that's just me being greedy. And not fair on my opponent. Uh, it'd be cool. How cool would that be? How cool would it be to have a VG season where it wasn't bring four, it was bring all six. Bring all six. It's like it's like singles, but for VG. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'd love to actually play a format like that. Just for a little bit. Be a little bit of a mix-up, wouldn't it? Put more emphasis on... Yeah, it would be just, it'd be just really fun, wouldn't it? Okay, well, we've got... We've got uh, Umbrian. Uh, it makes sense to bring the Thunderous out as well. Um, to kind of prevent any sort of Snarl. Snarl support. Um, I think I'm going to yawn into Thunderous. And I'm going to go for an Eerie. An Eerie Impulse. I mean, the other option is we... Yeah, let's go for the Eerie Impulse. I mean, the other option is going for a Scary Face and a Foul Player, but... Yeah, they're going to force it off the field. They're too worried about the Umbra and they're too worried about... Okay, the Tapalele coming out. Not ideal. Not ideal. But, especially with the Psychic Terrain, it makes it more difficult to utilize um, Thunderous. But we kind of knew that from Team Preview, so... We are going to see the Thunderous on my opponent's end go for the max, which is brilliant for us, to be honest, because it means that, that they're going to have to switch it out if they don't want to go to sleep, and they're not going to get full full use of that, that Thunderous. Eerie Impulse not going to work. Go for a max lightning. Get rid of this. <sighs> yeah, there's the Airstream. Into Umbrian. Does a nice chunk of damage. Probably puts us in Moonblast range, I would say. Um, hmm. There's the yawn though. So I'm being coming in quite clutch with that yawn. What else? What other options we've got? Helping hand, snarl, foul play. We don't really have the switch ins. I mean, we can switch in Zash in for Umbrian because I feel like you probably got a Moonblast Airstream. It's just you kind of want Zash in to kind of come in. No, I feel like we preserve Umbrian. I think Umbrian's a really key member of this team. Uh, so we'll preserve Umbrian. What are we going to do with Thunderous, though? Brr. We don't want to do really very much. I think maybe a Thunderbolt into... Do we just go after the opposing? They're not really too worried about the Lele. Although, yeah, the Lele is not Sash. Let's just go after the Thunderous, get some damage onto it, because then we can maximize Zashin when it comes in. Uh, Thunderous being asleep. Hopefully we see another Airstream. And either an expanded force or a moon blast into that Zashin. The problem is Ooh, Max Darkness. We don't like seeing that. It's into Thunderous. Um Yeah, the special defense drop, not ideal. Not one little bit. You've got to go after the Umbrian. Oh it doesn't game. Okay. It's it's better. Oh jeez, does so much damage. So much damage. Wow. Um hmm. Yeah, so much damage to Thunderous, not really much return. Okay, their Thunderous going to sleep now, brilliant. Uh, we've got a clear way to remove the Lele from the field, but I think we probably concentrate a little bit more down on something like the Thunderous here, because, like, does the Lele stay in? Does it stay in? Potentially. Um... I do worry about the Lele because it has got... Hmm. Okay, I think we concentrate down on the Lele a bit more. Like, does the Lele protect though? I think most of them are specs. That's the thing. Let's go after the Lele. And if it switches out, then we can capitalize here by doubling in on that slot. Nah, Behemoth Blade should be able to remove it though, so that's not the end of the world. Another Dazzling Gleam. We'll lose some of the rest, which is a little bit of a shame. But... Behemoth Blade going to be able to remove the Lele, and that's the end of the max turns for my opponent. I'm just thinking now, like, what, what options have we got to max? Can we max Ditto? I haven't used it in Series 8. I don't know if we can. Didn't really think that far ahead at the time. Surely we can max Ditto, right? I don't want to bring it in now. I want to bring in Umbrian. And then we can... Probably yawn the Calyrex slot. 
But we got to watch out for a superpower from the Thunderous onto Umbrian, of course. Probably protect Zash in here. We could just foul play it and then remove it. Potentially. But it's got to protect. It's got to protect, right? It's in such an awkward... It's, it's in such a horrible spot. We've got to protect Zashin in case they attack, because otherwise we lose Zashin. We could max Umbrian. Has that ever been done before? <laughs> I don't really want to do that, because we're going to be boosting... We're going to be boosting, like, um, Thunderous's attack every every time. We're probably better off going for a, a foul play into Thunderous. Yeah, because they're protecting. And then we have to sack Zashin the next turn. Depending on if we take down the Thunderous here. If we can. If this takes down the Thunderous, this would be amazing. Um, because then... Okay, it doesn't. So we're still in that bad spot where we, we can foul play into... Okay, so I think what we do is Behemoth Blade. Predict maybe a switch out from my opponent with the Calyrex. Hope that the Thunderous stays asleep so it can't superpower us. Yeah, and then the foul play should take down the Calyrex. Unless it's sashed. We will lose Ash in though now, which is not ideal. But if it is sashed, it does mean that we can bring in our own Ditto. And we've got a good way to deal with the uh, the Thunderous. There's a Grimnir. We just need it not to be sashed, to be honest. And then we probably can win with Ditto, depending on what their last Pokemon is. So let's see. Okay, perfect. No Sash, because they're Life Orb there. What's their last Pokemon? Please be something good. Please be something good. It has to be something like Urshifu or something like that. Uh, and then we're in a we're in not a bad spot with Ditto. If we can max it. If we can't, <laughs> it becomes so much more difficult. I don't know the mechanics though. Like, it's, it's Urshifu. You would imagine it was. Okay, so it's probably better, really, in hindsight changing into the Urshifu rather than um <laughs> the problem is now we're gonna have to max oh it's ah okay we can max so we aqua jet and then we max or do we go after huh yeah we aqua jet, aqua jet should get aqua jet should get the, the thunderous from that range and we can just ensure that with a helping hand and then we max and then we go after the Urshifu and then hopefully, because they have to close combat, they have to close combat uh, Umbrian here, really. So there's the Aqua Jet, helping hand, just enough, making sure. Let's see that close combat into Umbrian. Okay, there, there's a Chopper Berry. It's a nice item choice, honestly, it is. Even though, you know, we're so low health at the minute. But the fact that they've reduced their defenses makes it so much easier now for Ditto to win this game. And the other thing I would like to say is with Ditto, when it transforms into stuff, when we look at it, it would be cool if it was like the, the anime with the, the Ditto face. You know, I'm just, it's too much, isn't it? It's too much wishful thinking. Okay, let's go after this Urshifu. We can max, they can't. Technically, we should win this. <laughs> I'm not feeling massively confident, but I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to lock this one up. Pretty sure. We'll see. Let's see. Come on. At least we've got the dead work in today, which is good. You know? Big ol' and we now know, at least, well, you you all probably knew, but now I know. Oh my god, I don't, I think it's going to be a speed tie this next turn. I think it's going to be a speed tie. Honestly, it is. Yeah, because if they get another close combat, we're done. Oh, it's coming down to a speed tie. I don't like this. I don't like this. Come on, Ditto. You can win this for us. You can end on such a high. Come on, Ditto. We were so close to take it down. Come on. Low roll? Nah, we lose. We lose! We lose! How can we lose? Unless it's scarfed. It is scarfed. I think it's scarfed because it's got, yeah, it's got the four options there. Ice punch, other protect. Makes sense. So we were never going to win. Very good game to my opponent. Very sad that we lost that one. Um, to scarfed. Urshifu. 
Okay, our third and final opponent for the episode is here. They're playing a team of Whimsicott, Thunderous, Slanderous, Zashian, Regieleki, and Suicune. So we got the opportunity again to take advantage of the Ditto. Let's see if we can do it in this final one today. Uh, we've got Speed Control and Abundance from my opponent's team. They've got the Whimsicott, provides Tailwind support, potentially Trick Room. I doubt it on this team, though. Um, and then you've got the Regieleki as well with the Electro Web support and the Suicune as well that can board the old Tailwind. So lots of speed control for my opponent the one thing i would say is here you know rotom feels like a very good pick for us it's it's pretty strong against most things um and we've got the disruption to kind of help us out a little bit i think what we'll do we'll go we'll go with rotom landerous uh mm, maybe not landerous up top maybe not landerous up top i think landerous in the back we could is Ashen going to be a decent lead? Is Ashen's not a good lead. Uh, up top, maybe Umbrian. Could Umbrian be good? It's not ideal against something like uh, the Thunderous or the Zashin, to be honest. Okay, let's go. And I've got to bring... Yeah, I've got to bring Zashin. It means we're not bringing Ditto, which makes it very difficult because I, I like either sacrifice bringing Landorus here which would be not the sensible thing to do, or I bring the ditto. But I think, because I would prefer to get a win for us to end on today, I'm gonna opt for Landorus instead of the ditto, which is a little bit sad, but we've seen ditto do its thing today already, so it's not the end, end of the world. And uh, Landorus is so useful, especially in situations like this where you've got, you know, the Aleki and the Landorus coming out from my opponent. So, um, right, well, We've got a nice switch where we can bring in our own Landorus. And a uh, nasty plot. So that's an option. Or we could preserve Rotom. I think Rotom's quite valuable for us here. Um, my GLX is likely to switch out. That's the only, that's my only only issue. Where I think maybe Thunderous is the better one to preserve. It's got nasty plot, and let's go into Landorus. They know that we're not defiant as well now, so maybe puts a bit more of a, a kind of a target on Rotom's head here. It's because the Intimidate hasn't proc the defiant ability. Uh, but whether or not they are more worried about maybe prankster support and want to get rid of that potentially. Um, but I think that the, the kind of the, the, the running theme that you generally are going to see is let's kind of nail down that, that Rotom right now because if it gets a nasty plot up, then things get very difficult very quickly. We are going to see the Landorus max on my opponent's end. Makes sense. Uh, is it going to rock fall into... Okay, Electra Web. It's not too bad. Right, let me take some fat damage there. What are we going to see? Airstream, Rockfall? Rockfall into Landorus or Rossum? Okay, into Landorus. So, that's alright. Because now we've got the ability to max ourselves after a nasty plot, which is ideal. Um, <clears throat> we can preserve Landorus for later on in this game as well, which is, I think, probably the smarter player, considering that we're probably going to see Zashin from my opponent. So, um,. And it's likely we see an airstream from the opposing landers. I don't want to pull the, the max. Um, I think we go after Regieleki here, to be honest. And then pull in and pull in Thunderous here. Because they got airstream. I, I'm I'm guaranteeing they got airstream with, with Landorus here, not Rockfall. If they got Rockfall, they're going into to Rotom. Um, and they probably got hard into Rotom now with... Thunderbolt, Rockfall. That would be my guess. Potentially. So we'll see what they do. Um, but I know if that was me, I think I'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go hard into this Rotom now to make sure I can try and get as much damage to alleviate the damage that I'm able to do going forward. Oh dear. Oh dear, but it avoids going for the Screech and the Rockfall. They're going ham into uh, into the Rotom, but the Screech misses, which is so fortunate for us. Like, huge, huge. Uh, honestly, huge. Massive for us. The Screech there, Rockfall, probably... Would it have been enough? 
Would it have been enough? It probably would have been enough, right? It probably would have been. But we get rid of the Alecki, which is <clears throat> which is always good. And we get a rain up, which helps us just be a bit more threatening. Man, we get lucky with some of this RNG sometimes on this channel. I'm telling you. I waste it all on these videos. And then when I go into a tournament, I'm like, why can't I just have a little bit more luck? And I'm like, ah, it's because. It's because you use it when you're doing this. <laughs> when you're doing the episodes. Uh, okay. Do we have really any options with... I mean, Scary Face is always a nice option to uh, to go with onto the, the Landorus. They haven't went for Airstream yet. I don't think they're going to go for it here. They're probably going to tailwind with, with Wimmy. That'll make a lot of sense. Uh, the other option is, honestly, just bringing in Zash in. There's no way they're going to max Quake here. Uh, and we could bring Zash in. It's a pretty free switch here, and it protects our genies for later on in this game. Like the one thing that I would think right now is, is there room to bring in Landorus to get another Intimidate onto the board? But the the, the problem doing that right now is that uh, if we do remove something, Zashin's got kind of a free switch in, right? And we don't have the Landorus to kind of bring out. So it's nice to keep it in the back where possible. Okay, well there's a Rockfall helping hand into uh, Zashin. It's going to overwrite our rain. But, at the same time, Zashin kind of soaks that up super well, even with that life orb. It is minus one at the moment. So, Max Geyser, plus two, should take it down. Yeah, and it paves a way for uh, Zashin to come in now. Um, and we still have the Landorus. Like, if we brought in Landorus that turn, we'd probably go down to that Rockfall, or very close to. And then we've got the problem of having to readjust our board for when the Zashin comes onto the field and it just gets very difficult from that point. So, Zashin coming out. It'd have been a prime opportunity to bring the Ditto here, but I think we need the four Pokemon that we've actually brought. It makes a lot of sense. To do that, we'll go for another Geyser into Zashin and we'll this time cycle in the Land Earth. And the other thing that we haven't really taken advantage of at all has been the Swagger with the Lumberry on the Landorus, which I also think from the Thunderous is a really nice option there. We do see the battle cancel from my opponent, so we do pick up another win to end on today, which is brilliant, and uh, it's been a really exciting episode. I hope you have all enjoyed it. I've really had a great time with the team today. We'll hop over now, get the rental, so just to remind you of the rental from today's episode. Right, friends, here is today's rental code. Just to remind you, this is the team that we've been playing today, and a big shout out again to Pirakichi, uh, who has provided us with the rental for today's episode. Like I say, it's been a lot of fun featuring it. It's a great team, great concept the ditto is amazing i love it i love everything about the team it's been just a lot of fun to play around with and uh, i'm sure if you do try it on the ladder you'll experience the same sort of thing so let me know down in the comment section as always if you do try it out would love to hear but thank you so much for tuning in uh, and just a big shout out you know on top of everything just thank you so much for all the support that you give the channel it's uh, i love doing content like this and um i really do appreciate each and every one of you that comes out watches the videos comments enjoys them uh anything so just engaging with you guys through the channel is just a dream so thank you so much for making that a possibility i'm looking forward to wrapping up series eight next week it's gonna be a lot of fun uh, if you've got rental teams again that you'd like to see featured or anything particular that you'd like to see featured before we end series eight next week do let me know down in the comment section and I will do my best to make it happen in next week's episodes. Um, obviously with Players Cup now kind of being wrapped up as well after this weekend, there'll be a bit more time for me to start my stream schedule because it's been on the back burner for too long and it's something that I need to do. So hopefully with Series 8 ending, Pokemon Snap coming in, we can schedule some stream times which will be really nice. So we'll be doing that very soon. Right. Have a great weekend. Enjoy Players Cup 3 if you do catch it. Have a great weekend if you don't catch it. And uh, I'll see you all for another episode on the channel very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.